Hello, this is Sachin. Uh, today I am going to explain in detail memory section of chapter 2 of Introduction to Embedded System CBO KV book. So, as you know, in a previous section, I already explained the core of an embedded system. So, today I am going to cover the memory section. As you know, this um, chapter 2 has uh, six sections core, memory, sensors and actuators, communication interface, embedded firmware, and other system components. The, as you know, uh, any embedded system is a combination of all these components. So, today uh, I am going to explain you in detail the memory section of this chapter. So, memory section of this chapter has a mask, different types, ROM, RAM and in ROM we will just go through the various types as on screen uh, and uh, in RAM also we have three types and we will go through that. I will explain. So, as you know, we are surrounded by n number of embedded systems. In last video, I have explained. So, a common uh, person uh, is surrounded by around 100 to 200 in, uh, embedded systems. For example, it may be TV, mobile, DVD player, washing machine, fridge, microwave oven, camcorder, music player, remote, air conditioner or even outside we have covered with uh, sprinklers, TV, CCTV, uh, fire alarm and uh, ECG in hospitals and uh, different health care scanners, ATM, traffic light, barcode readers in shopping malls and smart uh, card readers and point of sale devices that what we call it even popular as POS. So, these are all are called as an embedded system. So, the embedded system, any embedded system is built around uh, these six basic components. So, core, memory, input output, actuator sensors, interface, communication interfaces and other embedded systems. Uh, subsystems. So, today we am going to cover the memory. So, memory uh, is uh, important of uh, you take any microprocessor based embedded system. So, microprocessor based embedded system uh, contain uh, built in memory, they are called as an on chip memory and or if the memory is need to be externally connected and such embedded systems are called as an op chip memory uh, embedded systems. So, here uh, uh, there is on a diagram and in that uh, the, the dotted lines square box is strong. If you remove this dotted line square box, this embedded system has uh, is designed as a op chip memory, everything is connected externally. If you draw a dotted line, it means within the IC. These are all input outputs as well as memory is on chip. So, the memory is mainly classified into two types. One read only memory that we usually refer it as an a ROM and another one is another one is a random access memory that we always refer it as an RAM. Uh, even sometime it is called as an, a read write memory. Examples, the memory uh, which is used to store that code is called as an a ROM. So, that is within a picture in this slide and uh, the memory uh, which is used to store the data is called as an RAM. 
first program a uh, first we'll go through the first type that is a rom rom is always referred as an a uh, program storage memory the program which is required to make the peripherals of the embedded system uh, make work we usually write the programs so these programs are are all what we call it as a code sometime the programs are called as a code so those are stored in rom and uh, the rom never uh, arises or non volatile as when the power is made off the program what is stored it never get erased depending on a fabrication erasing and reprogramming or programming techniques the ram rom are classified into six types masked rom that usually we call as an m rom then p rom or sometime it is referred uh, called as an otp one time programmable rom eprom flash eeprom nvram first we'll uh, try to know the first uh, type mask rom that we refer it as an m rom so mask rom is a uses a hardware technology for storing the data on a rom the device in a uh, uh, factory is programmed by masking and metallization process the whatever the program uh, is written to make the embedded system to work that program along with the ic de fabrication design is sent to the fab where the the memory is manufactured along with program only so later on you need not to burn the program on the memory the memory is fabricated with program so low cost they are low cost if they are manufactured in bulk and uh, they are in ability to modify the device firmware as to upgrade and uh, best example it is used in uh, electronic musical instrument for sound data as you know the kids uses the keyboard to play the music or small pianos for kids in that for every key when we press a particular sound will come out that remains same forever that's why that this kind of data are used to store in mask rom at the same time this mask roms are used in network operating systems uh, server operating systems and uh, storing a uh, font for a uh, laser printers next one is a uh, programmable rom or also call, uh, sometime called it as an uh, otp and this <coughs> is uh, unlike a m rom or a mask rom the previous one which one or uh, type of a rom what we discussed it's not pre programmed and at the time of fab and uh, user are allowed to write uh, burn a program on the memory only one time as it comes in the wire arranged matrix so to store the program the data bits what i have display uh, on the screen just you can observe 1010 1101 so you have to burn a fuse to store zero and you need not to burn or blow 
uh, any fuse okay just like a electric fuse as you know beside the electric mit, uh, meter reader so they have uh, they uh, connect uh, two fuses to protect your appliances from the high voltages so when a high voltage comes this fuse burns there is no supply to your home like that you have to burn the fuses so that there is no storage of data so that is zero waste and when you burn the fuse uh, not burn the fuse that represents logic one the binary so this uh, it's a low cost and otp cannot be reprogrammed only once you can program and uh, this uh, otp has a uh, several applications so it is used in cell phone a uh, video game consoles rf id tags and uh, medical devices so in rf id tag for example when you visit a mall there is a rf id tags are attached to the goods when you buy a cloth for example so if you take a cloth without billing then the at the exit point the rf reader which are fixed they start beep so in rfid tags this memory is used so next type of a rom is erasable programmable rom it's called as an ep rom so flexibility it gives the flexibility to reprogram so several number of times but it is not in the case of m rom so must rom at the time of fabrication only the program is burned so further no program so otp next rom what we have discussed so otp one time first time the 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 cells are arranged in the form of fuses so where you want to st re uh, store a one so you need not to burn any fuse and where you want to store zero you have to burn a fuse so in this the erasable programmable rom so you can reprogram several number of times so it is possible because for charging for storing sorry for storing data we use the charging of a fet a floating gate of a fet so quartz crystal window is used to erase the data on the memory so you can see here in this picture so there is a window the it's called as a quartz crystal window so which is used to erase the data on this memory so just we have to put in the uv eraser device for 20 to 30 minutes to completely erase the data on this and then you can reprogram it so next in the line list is ee prom what you call as an electrically erasable programmable rom so this can be a uh, uh, modified form of uh, ee prom you can say there we provide a window here the data is erased electrical okay so here uh, chip is uh, has a data uh, storage mode and a chip erase mode if it is the erase mode uh, the erase uh, uh, the data is erased in few millisecond and it will give greater flexibility for system designers for repro uh, for give, providing a reprogramming in less amount of time so so this has a limitation as uh, the capacity of the storage capacity is few kilobytes and most of the time this is used in computer system bios that bios basic input output system which has fixed a uh, memory uh, chip which is fixed on the motherboard 
which will provide the basic programs which are required to start the computer. Okay. So next one in the list is Flash. Flash is an enhanced version of EEPROM. So it's a reprogrammability of the EEPROM is and the high capability of a standard ROM is incorporated in this flash and uh, one advantage of this flash is the floating gate MOSFETs are used as a building block for this type of memory. Erasing of a memory can be done at a sector level. So this memory has as it you can see in the this diagram. So memory is arranged or fabricated in page wise or a sector wise and then the memory is arranged the complete in rest all the previous cases either it may be uh, in uh, EEPROM the window and in a electrically erasable PROM whole memory e data is arranged. In this case the whole memory data is not arranged the memory is organized in sectors or in pages. So the selected page or a sector uh, data is arranged and that can be reprogrammed. So the number of flash cycles are thousand or even uh, nowadays a modern technology has increased the number of cycles and in th this kind of uh, memory is are used in uh, uh, many modern PCs having a BIOS and uh, most popular um, right the data storage uh, device what we all carry is a pen drive what we call USB flash drive modems uh, memory card readers which are used in our mobiles are all uh, of this type fall in this type. Next in the list is NVRAM. So how can you say that RAM is a type of a ROM? So NVRAM is a non-volatile RAM. How can a RAM be a non-volatile? So as you can see in this picture, so along with the memory they have connected RAM, they have connected a battery, a lithium cell battery. So when you switch off the power supply, if it is a ROM, the data is not vanish or volatile. So if it is a RAM, data vanishes or erased out. So in this case, the RAM connected along with battery because of that data is not erased or so this is called as an NV RAM non-volatile RAM and lifespan of this RAM is 10 years and uh, maximum uh, example which is uh, Dallas companies I see that is used stored 32 kilobyte. So with this uh, we covered all the types of ROM, now we will just have a discussion about a RAM. RAM is a random access memory, even it is called as a read write memory or sometime we call it as a data memory, ROM program memory, RAM as a data memory or working memory also. In a controller or processor based embedded system well, it, um, and um, we can access the desired what is the why it is called as a uh, random access access memory because we can access the desired memory location directly without needing of traversing through the entire memory so directly so 
any location can be accessed that's why it's called as an a random access memory and and uh, this uh, ram falls into three types or uh, three categories one is s ram that what we call as an a static ram second one is a dynamic ram the third one is a nv ram non volatile ram so static ram is a memory cell of a static ram are made up of uh, flip flops that you can see here in the diagram so s ram memory cell or uh, these red square boxes represents memory cell and i uh, already i explained that um, memory is a uh, nothing but a combination of decoder decoder and a uh, register register is a collection of a cascade of flip flops so here yes ram means static so the to store the bit we use flip flop so here in a static ram the six transistor six transistor uh, or a six mosfet what circuit use used and the two transistors out of which are used for controlling the access so the ram is s ram is faster in operation as resistive network and a switching capability and uh, simpler form of this can be visualized as below and here it is uh, one inverter is feeding the other so and the another two transistor are used for control operation for write and read so in this q1 q2 form one inverter so q3 and q4 forms the another inverter and the output output of the one inverter is given as an input to the other one and here the b bit line b and here other side bit line b bar so if bit line v you want to store in this so bit line if you apply one and b bar obviously it is zero so word line we have to make high so the data can be stored so when the data word you line if you make it one the these q5 and q6 transistor becomes on and the b line what the data what you applied it gets stored on this so in similarly you can access the data the major limitation of sram is low capacity and high cost why it's called low capacity because in a in a specified square millimeter of area we can accommodate very less memory cells so next type of a uh, ram is a dram so dram is called as a dynamic ram dynamic changing so the data in this as we use is to store the capacitor is discharges right and then it start leaking so sd ram dram compared to s ram a dram we use only one transistor and then a capacitor is used so the cap uh, the, the disadvantage of this form is the capacitor start leaking and the special circuit called a sd ram controller are used for refreshing operation the refreshing operation is done periodically in milliseconds the mosfet act like an a gate for incoming and outgoing data in this for example here a bit stream uh, displayed on the slide 
So, 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 1. Suppose any 1 bit, so if you want to 8 bit, this kind of 8 circuits you have to are a cascade to form 1 byte. This is on 1 cell if you want to store a D naught bit that is 1, then you have to apply a bit line B 1 and then you have to apply the control signal. The control signal when you apply 1, this works like in a gate, the transistor become on and the bit line what you have applied, if it is a 1, the capacitor gets stored, charge, fully charged charges or if you apply 0, the capacitor not charged that represent logic 0 and when you apply 1, the capacitor get charged that is represent logic 1 that is storage. So, let finally uh, conclude uh, this uh, memory section by comparing the SRAM and DRAM. So, SRAM cell uh, need a 6 CMOS transistor uses and DRAM cell we use only one transistor and a capacitor. And the SRAM cells does not require any refreshing circuit as they store the um, data in the form of voltage. But here in case a DRAM dynamic RAM as we use one single MOSFET and a capacitor for storage, it needs a refreshing. Every few milliseconds we have to refresh. The low capacity, low density, high capacity, DRAM is a high density. High density in the sense in a fixed specified square millimeter of area, we can accumulate more number of cells. SRAMs are more expensive because and compared to DRAMs. DRAMs are less expensive. SRAMs are more expensive because we need to store or the circuits are built with more number of transistors. Faster in operation, typical access time is 10 nanosecond, but in DRAM access time is 60 nanosecond. If you have any doubt, uh, any clarification is required, you can send a mail. Okay. Thank you.